kick off with... <laughs> Lucy. <laughs> not going to get annoying at all. So what's the first big thing we should keep, be keeping an eye on? Well, this is will come as no surprise to listeners, but this is, of course, the week of the spring statement. All the focus in Westminster is on the economy, um, which is facing pretty dire headwinds, and what Rishi Sunak is going to do to alleviate the cost of living crisis that's besieging families. Now, what do you think he's going to do? Because I know you spoke to him yesterday, because you um, presented T&G with Tom, and he said he's, he's very keen to present, I get it, I'm going to do something. Uh, we we but I can't do everything. Yeah. Uh, and but he's in this problem, isn't he? Because he because of the pandemic, it's it's ratcheted up expectations that every time a problem comes along, Rishi Sunak gets the checkbook out. Well, that's right, and the expectations are high. That's why I think his uh, the management of that so far has been him trying to warn people that yes, he's in listening mode. They don't have their fingers stuck in their ears at the Treasury, but that this is a difficult time uh, and that he can't tackle every element of the cost of living crisis. Now it's time for... Right, number four on your list of uh, five things to keep an eye on this year, Lucy. Well, this is the net zero struggles. Um, very fashionable to be green. It seemed at the beginning of Boris Johnson's premiership quite an easy way for him to overhaul the reputation of a party that's sometimes uh, lambasted as nasty. But it's become a, a real kind of touch point um, between those more on the centre of the party and those on the right. And we've seen that over the weekend as some of the tensions between the Prime Minister and the Chancellor have spilt over into the public realm over um, the energy strategy. Boris Johnson said two weeks ago that it would be announced within days. We've still seen nothing yet. Could be this week, could be next he's got, week. He's chairing a round table. That's always a sign that they can't work out what to do when the number 10 host a round table. Absolutely. That's a, as you say, that's a sign they're trying to show there's action without actually being anything firmly um, announceable available. So the Prime Minister wants to forge ahead with some really expensive investment into nuclear power. At the moment, it makes up about 15 percent of the UK's energy mix. But that's due to um, plunge by 2030 as the majority of the nuclear fleet of power stations will retire. Now it's time for... Number three, the person we should be looking out for, Lucy. Who is it? It's David Canzini. Now, he may not be a household name, at least yet, but he's a key ally of uh, Linton Crosby, well known as the Wizard of Oz, the key uh, election strategist. And he's been brought in to do two things, get the party ready for a general election and also to try and um, loop in disgruntled backbenchers and get them on side with the Prime Minister again after the turbulence uh, his administration faced at the beginning of this year. I think he's a fascinating character. He gave an address to um, the special advisers, what's known as SPAD School, the weekly uh, update they have on a Friday. And he warned them, you better be ready for an election next year, slightly reframing expectations that it was going to be May 2024 at the earliest. So now we come to number two. This is the place to keep an eye on. Where should we be looking at, Lucy? Well, I'm very interested in Berry. Um, which is uh, one of the key councils, I think, to watch in the upcoming local elections on May the 5th. It is, of course, the um, town in which we saw uh, a Conservative MP, Christian Wakeford, defect to Labour. He had one of the smallest majorities in the Conservative Party. Unclear if perhaps he only thought Only a couple his... of months ago. It feels like only a, a couple of months a, ago. years ago, but it was only a couple of months ago, that extraordinary moment at PMQs when he got up and walked across the House of Commons. It was, it was a remarkable moment. Um, and I think many people think perhaps he had a slight eye on his own re-election chances by making that move. So it will be interesting um, to see whether the Tories can maintain support there. Um, also several councils to watch out for in London, a key one of which is Wandsworth, which has been controlled by the Conservatives since 1978, shortly before Margaret Thatcher entered Downing Street. And I've spoken to senior government sources who are very concerned that the Tories might see that for the first time in decades. And that would be a bit of a seismic moment. So now it's time for number one. Excellent. Uh, we are talking, we're talking about Keir Starmer. Um, this is particularly to do with the Labour Party. Yeah, well, this is about the party uh, being on the brink of financial collapse, potentially. Uh, comes after uh, having to go through a round of mass redundancies, asking staff to accept a real terms pay cut. 
And this is in part because they have lost a lot of members um, since the end of the Corbyn era, people who um, are unhappy with the more moderate stance taken by Keir Starmer and the ditching of some of those more radical policy positions. That's left them uh, with £8 million in dues short. Um, and now Unite, one of their biggest funders, is threatening to pull uh, all support entirely. We haven't mentioned Partygate, but we possibly should. Where are we? in the process of resolving it? And do you think it will play any part in those local elections? Yeah, I do. I think it hasn't gone away uh, as an issue, despite Jacob Rees-Mogg dismissing it as fluff. Fluff, mere fluff. Uh, mere fluff in comparison to um, the, the scenes of carnage we're seeing in Ukraine. I think there is still a high degree of anger uh, about that. But, of course, you can't keep up momentum with a scandal like that. You know, it was amazing to my mind how long it ran in the first place, given we're in this era of 24-7 news. People have short TikTok-style uh, attention spans. I think we don't know, frankly, when the police are going to come back with their decisions on fixed penalty notices. One thing I think has been underpriced is the idea that there could be potentially quite a significant number of people in Downing Street who receive the fixed penalty notices while the main boss, Boris Johnson, doesn't. I think there's a good rationale for thinking he probably won't because he always has a reason to have been there. It's his home and it's his workplace. Um, and I think if there are junior staff who feel that they've been thrown under a bus or they're getting punished when the senior echelons of power aren't, we could see more briefing. We could see more people turning against him. There are reports at the moment that morale is not is not great in parts of Downing Street. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see um, how that pans out. Cause we have...